Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. J Welcome Pro. Welcome to episode two. What are we so, going to name this? Um, I'm, I'm thinking we're naming it. The, the Louder Podcast? Louder Podcast <laughs> or Get Loud. Get Loud, Get Louder. Get Louder. We'll, we'll come up with it. Yeah. This is sort of um, these first five podcasts are tester podcasts, um, but you'll still get value from them, so stay tuned. Uh, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to ask you a question, Brandon. All right, cool. So Brandon. Yes. Can you share a moment in your life where you faced a significant challenge and how you overcame it? God, man, I didn't get no prep on these, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right. All right, let's see. A significant moment in my life, a moment I have a significant challenge. Whew. Yeah, man. Uh, it was multiple challenges at once. So... In 2019, I met my current fiance. I met my girl, right? You know, 2019, things were popping. I was doing shows. I was promoting my own shows, like renting out venues, booking artists, and then headlining myself, building my fan base. Um, met my girl. She was a big supporter. She moved in downtown. January 2020 comes along. Boom. Pregnant. We're pregnant. Hey, hey, congratulations. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? A couple months later, boom, COVID. That big ass show you had planned at Mavericks, canceled. Um, Got to move out of my place because I can't work anymore at my, at my other job. Girl might get laid off. So we get out, move into my parents' house. She's getting more and more pregnant. Summertime is hot. We end up moving into another, finding another place to move into, have the baby. And all throughout this time, I don't have a job. I don't have work. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my music career. And my life is basically like taking 180 degree turns like every three months or so. And so that was probably one of the hardest times of my life because everything that I had been working on for the previous 10 years seems to have come to a complete stop in addition to having a baby, in addition to moving three times in, in three months or, or four months. And then it's like, now I have to just kind of figure out what to do with my life because I feel like everything is stopped. Everything that I've been passionate about, dreaming about, working on, I feel like is no longer an option. And now I have like a family to support. I have a lot more financial pressure. Um, and so I had to make a decision and that decision was to start this business and Starting a business is equally as hard as raising a child, if not harder. <laughs> so it's just like, it was just like thing after thing after thing after thing. And, and I'm still in it. I finally feel, this is probably the first moment after linking up with you where I feel a little bit of relief. So it's been like two straight years of extreme high stress of like panicking as to what to do next every day until like right now. The end. And you said running a business equivalent to running uh to raising a kid. Harder. Running a business is harder. Yeah. Yeah. Why why do you say that? Um, I think running a business is harder than raising a kid because raising a kid, a lot of it comes naturally. You know, there's a lot there's a lot of pressures in other areas, like financially, it puts a lot of stress on your relationship and things like that. But I feel like you, I feel like you can provide the basic needs as a human being, as a parent, um, without much. And I think that you can, you can take your own approach and a lot of, and as long as you're pure at heart and you love your child more than anything, then you're going to be okay. And it could be stressful. They can be annoying. They could, they take away a lot of your time for what the, the stuff that you were doing before and you thought you were passionate about or still are, but you find ways to make it work. You have a responsibility right? But with a, starting a business, there is no responsibility associated with that. It's purely up to you to continue working on it the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And the craziest part about it is if you don't set, set a standard for yourself to work on it the next day, 
It's just going to, it'll fizzle away and nobody's going to come knocking on your door. Nobody's going to come up and say, Brian, you didn't work on your business today. You better get into it or you're fired. It's just, no one cares. And it just, it will fizzle away as if it never existed. If you don't make the commitment to work on it every single day. And on top of that, to my point of being a parent, like you, you a lot of things come naturally. It's very unnatural <laughs> to be, to figure out all the things to do to run a business. It's stuff that you have no freaking clue that you need. You don't realize it until you either encounter that problem and then you have to find a solution or you're paying a lot of money for coaching and mentoring. And so there's so many aspects of it that you have no clue that are necessary that exist. Habits and patterns that you have to develop that you have never had as a, as a regular way of life and operating at, in a daily life. Like, and, and it's just, you have to be so relentless every day, unwavering willpower, unwavering commitment. If it's not unwavering, you will fail. And that's why 95% of businesses fail is because you have to work so hard for so long, so consistently, it really, it really separates. It's a very business entrepreneurship is a very good, uh, determiner, determining of, 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 of hard workers and non-hard workers. It's just like, <laughs> it's going to put you to the test all the way to the max. And it's going to make you, it's going to help you discover whether you really want it or not. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I do know what you're saying. Um, I want to ask you, what is one thing you believe, which, what is one thing you believe that others might find controversial? Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, are we gonna get into like religion and like politics or like? Just what what is <laughs> <laughs> what is that one thing you believe that maybe um, it could be how, how you believe you raise your kids? It could be, it could be uh, one thing about business that some people find controversial. It could be anything. It could be religion. It could be re uh, politics. It could be whatever. But what is one thing you believe that others that is controversial yeah um i think i believe that i mean maybe it's maybe it has to do with like when you do have a kid and you do start having a family that there seems to be this uh, this assumption that your life stops and to a certain degree it does like all of a sudden you have this new responsibility and it's like now, now your responsibility is to raise this child. And it's like, but wait, I, what about all this, my life? You know, like I had all these plans, I had all these things that I was doing, and now I have half the time, unless you're already successful and you already have a bunch of money, you know what I'm saying? It changes everything, but most people don't when they have kids. And it's like, now you have to sacrifice what you wanted for them. And then that's what drives people crazy. It's because it's like, now it's like, your life becomes about serving them. And it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's like a double-edged sword, right? Because you love your child, you want to you nurture them, you want to see them grow, but then you also want to keep doing what you're doing because what is my life now insignificant? Like everything that I wanted now insignificant? And, and so it's like, I feel like we should still have a right. I feel like I have a, the right to continue working on what I'm, what I'm working on. But what makes it so difficult is because some, something has, someone's got to pay, you know, whether that's in the form of money or time or stress, someone's got to pay the price for me to continue working on what I'm working on. I either have to pay a whole bunch of nannies or I have to put pressure on my parents to watch them or my girl has to, you know, stop doing what she's doing or she's got to pay the money or like someone's got to pay <laughs> or I could just stop what I'm doing completely stop everything in my life and dedicate my life to raising my children. And I think that to an extent is doing them a disservice also because now they can't see me and be uh, do, doing my thing and become influenced and motivated and inspired by what I'm doing, you know? And so that's why I think that it's highly important for me to keep doing my thing so they're inspired by me. And that is very controversial because you do sacrifice for your kids, right? And this is coming from somebody who doesn't have kids, mm -hmm. but 
you would think like you hear stories of and it's that balance, right? Like you'll hear kids talk about how their parents weren't there for them growing up, but because their parents were trying to hustle to make a better life, but all they wanted was their dad to be there, right? Um, and also, but you do have to sacrifice somewhat. It can't be like all kids because then you can't provide them a good life. Right. And it really, there's no winning because right. when they're young, <laughs> they just want to spend time with you. Right. But then they'll get to an age where they'll realize like if you sacrifice for them, mm-hmm. no, in, in terms of like not grinding on your, your business, right. not making that money to provide them a better life, to go on the vacations, right. to retire your wife. Um, well, then no one's going to be happy. Your kids, once they reach teenhood and they realize they're poor, right. they're not going to be happy. Your wife's right. not going to be happy because, you know, she wants to take care of the kids too, but she has to work hella hard. Um, yeah, you're right. Nobody wins. And so no, no one no one wins. So there has to be a sense of some type of selfishness. Balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, imbalance, though. Imbalance. There's never balance. I don't, I don't believe what yeah. no one says. Oh, there's balance. <laughs> there's well, you, no you, balance. You, you, you attempt... You strive for balance, right? There's always going to be teetering. There's always going to be teetering no matter what. The scale's going to go one way or the other. It's rarely just going to be sitting there still, mm-hmm. right? But I think a lot of it, a lot, I think the, the fact, what makes it unfair is like our society. I think that even though I'm, I'm down to play the game, I understand the capitalism, I understand the world we live in, I'm I just like everybody else, infatuated with the lifestyle that a possibility, right? A balling out, all that shit. I'm down to play the game. I know it's possible for me because everyone else, a lot of people have done it. But at the same time, I am also 100% aware of the fact that it's probably crippling us and it's toxic as fuck. Like, I am totally down for the village life, bro. Like, completely unattached to anything material. If if everyone around you is down with that too, then it's, that to me, that's pure happiness. Being with people, laughing, singing, growing food, eating, making love, making children, like without the pressure of this, like, oh, well, you got to save money to buy a house and you got to get a job and you got to do this. It's like, I understand it's we're in the modern world, but I think it just adds a whole layer where it puts us every day in this position of like, all we're doing is working to li- live and living to work. I think we're blessed because since we're, your kids are so young right now, um, they're not really going to notice too much. Yeah. Which gives you some time to really get your money up. Yeah. Um, but as entrepreneurs, we dictate the rules of right. how we run our business. Right, right. So I became an entrepreneur because I've seen, I was trying to find the perfect balance. I want to make a bunch of money uh, and I want my own schedule, all this stuff, even though that means I work 24 hours, seven days a week, it's fine, whatever. But as, a, as someone who runs his own business, um, when you you could bring your kids to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right, and we we do get to dictate. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I don't know if this is the appropriate point to be making on our podcast or not. But because <laughs> I know we want to be able to use this for content and stuff, but I just feel like it sucks that we have to, in this society, especially in California. It just seems like you have to be rich in order to have a good life. Absolutely. I, I say this all the time. California, I mean, not California. Um, America is the land of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Now, the chances to make it are small. I think only <laughs> 5% of entrepreneurs will make it through business, right? Successfully. Um, but we have that 5% chance of succeeding. And we could always try and try and try and try. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're going to be poor, if, if you don't plan on being rich in America... Don't live in America. America out. does not treat its poor good at all. Right. Go move to a, another country for that. But if you want the opportunity to ball out and live the good life, right. America has the most opportunity to make that happen. And I'm all about the game, and I love the game, <laughs> and I, I want to be a part of the game, and yeah. I want that chance. And if I can't make it, I'm moving to another country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, if I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to the islands, bro. Island life. <laughs> Um, so Brandon, what is the most important lesson you've learned in marketing? The most important lesson I think I've learned in marketing is that 
that it's all about consistency. I think consistency is the one thing that really separates everybody. And even if, even if you don't have the best material, the best content, the best product, for damn sure not the best product, because that doesn't matter. You know, if you can, if you can market well, you're going to sell. You're going to have bad reviews, sure. But if you can market well, you're going to sell. But I think consistency across the board is what I've learned through all my different careers, music, all these different things. That's always where I ended up failing was inconsistency. So I would be inconsistently consistent or consistently inconsistent, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, that's, and, that, and that's where the hard work comes in. It's like that point that when you reach that boiling point of like, you can't do it anymore because it's so difficult to continue to be consistent. It's like those that are able to either push through that or develop the systems that allow them to do that more efficiently. Um, that's what separates people. So being able to be consistent in your marketing efforts and putting stuff out there, putting material out there, putting ads out there, putting content out there, those, that, that, those are going to be the people who win. Yeah, I agree. Consistency is the most important in anything you do. Right. Show up exactly. Little, it's better to show up a little bit every day mm -hmm. than for a two-week sprint, and then three stop. months gone, <laughs> two-month sprint. Exactly. Ten months gone. Um, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give your younger self? How far back? Oof. Uh, that, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's say... Because I got a lot of points. I think about this a lot. You know what? I would say if you could go back from 28 to 33, what would you, what advice would you give yourself? 28 to 33. So 28 is like eight years ago for me. Um, I'm pretty sure I still own my condo. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I owned a con, I owned my condo then I would have told myself not to sell it. Um, keep it, still do those renovations, but keep it continue to rent it out and continue building your real estate portfolio, never sell. If you sell, it's like a 1 billion percent chance that you're rolling it over into another property. But, um, and, then, and, then I, and then I would tell myself, develop in your business ventures, Brandon. You're doing your music, you're doing your thing, develop a system and a process to be consistent now. And, and if you need to, and you, you need to figure out, you need to figure out what you can afford every month to hire somebody or to hire help in order to put those systems into play and to be consistent with them. And if you can, if you can afford going out and doing this and buying that for, you know, leisure and, and fun, then you can afford to find someone that can assist you in being consistent in your processes and your, in, in, in your, in your marketing efforts. Because like I said before, that's where I fell short was the consistency. So I would tell myself to keep the condo. Oh, and then I would say, uh, uh, sell the, uh, buy Amazon and Google and sell, don't s sell the, uh, <laughs> the Apple stock at that particular date. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing would have been to, to learn how to implement processes and procedures to be consistent and not sell the condo. Do you, um, I know you keep bringing up consistency. Do you feel you are more consistent today more than ever? Yes. Yes. But even so, I fell into dry spells. You know, like even right now, what we're doing is we are setting up our process. And, I, and, and even in the, in, the, in the process of setting up our process, we've taken a dip in our content. And so I think that's uh, a lot of people say... If I, if I give advice to anybody, it would be go dark for a year. They say, go dark for a year. If you haven't made it and you're trying to build your business or your music career or whatever it is, I say, go dark for a year. Spend that whole year creating content, acquiring skills, building up your content library, building up your brand, all the shit. And instead of putting it out, just save it. And then a year later, start dropping. And then you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna start the way you wish you had started, and you're going to be able to be consistent all the way through. And if you can continue those processes that you develop in that dark year, you keep them going, and then you'll be able to continue to be consistent. So 
yeah, it's like right now we're in a dip because we're setting up our processes, right? And it's like we're trying to figure out the, the podcast setup. We're trying to get all the, the technology in place. We're painting the studio. It's like that's why we're taking this dip. And then once we have it in place, then all of a sudden you're going to start seeing us drop videos every day. So it's getting to that point. I think one thing we're doing uh, with that as well is, yeah, you're saying we're taking a dip, but I think we're going after it even without it being perfect. We're running across issues. We got technolo technology issues, mm -hmm. and technology issues are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> issues to fix, but we're still making it happen. Right. We're making it happen. It's not perfect, but we're still putting stuff out there. We're still creating stuff. Um, it's not perfect, but we're still getting after it. And I don't think, I think um, when you focus so much on it being perfect, yeah. you keep delaying it. Yeah, you absolutely. keep delaying it. You keep de delaying it. And as long as you can um, be like, hey, it's not going to be perfect. I don't care what people think about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And most people don't even really understand. Most people don't even get that it's not perfect. Right, exactly. They don't know any better. We know better, right. but they don't know any better. Did you post that video that you sent me yesterday? No, because... Why? You, you, because, it, <laughs> because you guys told me it sounded like I had an incomplete thought, <laughs> so I, got, I didn't want to post it and look stupid. Hey, well, you were supposed to not care, right? Well, I just post it. I didn't <laughs> care if I was taking uh, advisory shit from, <laughs> from a couple of people. I'll post it. Uh, I think it looks great. I think, you think it looks it look, Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll post it, you know, yeah. and I'll just make better. I wish I had more stuff to post uh, yeah. behind it. Right. So, exactly. It's the fear of the inconsistency, right? Well, it's just like... It's because if, we well, don't have that process and that firing off. No, yet. it's not even that. It's, it's, so if that one... Freaking bunks. Yeah, then you have I can. I, one. I have. I can uh, follow up with something better. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, I get you. I get you. And and and, and to your point though, it's like yes. Obviously, I'm, when I talk about taking a dip, I mean purely from a, a external like perception perception point of view, like people seeing us post stuff, right? But at the same time, we still have leads coming in. We still have our lead generation process taking place. We're still doing podcasts with with other people. We're still closing deals. So it's like we haven't let that take in a dip by any means. Purely just like the content releasing, the releasing of our own content. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so welcome to episode two. We'll call the first five episodes the build up. Yeah. And you should see everything build up and become better quality as each podcast goes. Yes, sir. So welcome to Louder Media. You got Brandon. That's me. You got J Pro. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, and we'll see you on the next one. Do you, don't, you don't want me to ask you any, any of the questions? We're good. Uh, you can ask me one question. <laughs> what are you the most excited about in our new venture? Ooh. Well, I'm the most excited about building a business is like a game to me. And I remember that I have friends that brag about playing video games and playing games and leveling up in their games and whatever the level up is. And I don't play video games, um, especially because I can have an obsessive style personality where I get hooked on one thing and just that one thing and nothing else matters. Right. And I remember a few years ago, uh, I was bored. I was a little burned out. And I was like, I need to do something that's not business. So I started playing uh, Grand Theft Auto V for the first time. <laughs> and all my friends were like, you got to play online. You got to play online. And I was like, I don't want to play online. I got to finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I beat that game within, like, I think it was like a week. Like, yeah. I, I played like, four, like, spent eight hours Every for day. a whole week until I beat that game. And the reason I did that was because I'm, I'm in my back of my head, I was like, I need to finish the game. I need to finish the game. I need to finish the game so I can like put this game behind me. Yeah. And as I was leveling, leveling up in the game and, you know, buying the weapons and the cars and all that stuff, um, I realized that people play this. I'm only playing this game for a week, but people will play this style forever. game forever, for years. Yeah. And I was like, you realize you can do this in real life. 
Mm-hmm. You can level up in real life. You can buy the car in real life. You can yeah. buy the accessories in real life. You can start a business. You could go on side quests or where the hell it is, you know, in, in real life. Yeah. And have real life accomplishments, real life XP, real life experiences, uh, real life money. And so for me, I'm very excited. To me, this is growing a business is like a game. And every level up is like a, feels like a level up. Um, every time I'm able to service clients and they're stoked about the work, I get genuinely stoked. So I'm very excited. And it sounds kind of corny, but I'm actually excited to help a lot of people because they need the service we provide, content marketing, mm-hmm. marketing in general. And when they see the results, that makes me happy. Hell yes. Hold on. I'm marking that. So you'll see the spike on the audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that's a clip right there. And um, all right. So that was episode two. And we out. We out. <laughs>